Hi, Caleb here from Bubblebee Industries. I'd like to take you over some of our miniature lavalier uh, microphone tools. Um, and I'll be as quick as possible with each one and we'll get through the whole range and you can ask questions about it later. So uh, yeah, everyone loves a good lav micing box. And um, we have a range of tools that um, can help you get better sound for your recordings uh, using various lav micing techniques. So let's take a look at what's in the box. I've got another box there, so let me move this just over there for now. Uh, the first thing I'd like to show you is uh, our range of wind bubbles. Um, that was the first product we created for lav mics. And to do that, I've got our little friend, the DPA4060 over here. And I'll show you how to mount a wind bubble and what it sounds like on and how to take the mic back out. Um, so basically that's the 4060, it's an omnidirectional mic and it is susceptible to wind noise and overload. Um, so we created the wind bubble to protect these little guys and many other lavalier mics from wind. Um, and they have a hard mesh basket on the inside which is the, the magic source. It holds a space of dead air around the capsule and that allows the capsule to do its job or perform as naturally as possible. It's got two little legs on it and those are used to find the hole. They're not meant for erratic pulling. Um, and you take the capsule and pop that into the wind bubble. And at that point, normally people push it up to the end of the mesh bubble on the inside. And it's highly recommended that you then just ease it back out about a millimeter, maybe two millimeters. And by doing that, you're then maintaining space and air gap, a bubble of dead air around the top of the capsule as well, because any fabric pushed against it will transmit vibrations a lot, a lot louder. And uh, that's what it sounds like when it's on as well. So that's the 4060 with the wind bubble on it. And um, we use as good quality materials and the design is designed specifically to allow it um, to be as uh, transparent as possible in terms of frequency. Um, though it, it is always a compromise when you put something around the capsule. If you want more wind protection on this, for example, you could use the size three instead, which is furrier. Um, you could use the size two or the size three on the DPA 4060. Um, and there are four sizes. And if you'd like to find out exactly which size fits your lav mic, go onto our website and check out our size guide under info um, for the wind bubbles. And that's uh, got a lot of mics and a lot of different sizes on it. Um, so yeah, we've got the four sizes. Uh, there are also six different colors. So that's gray, black, we've got brown ones. That's the size one, incidentally, it's very small. That'll fit your MK1 DPA 6060, um, Countryman B6 and such mics. And that's the size four, that's the biggest one. So that'll fit mics with a diameter of, um, you know, 10, 10, 11 millimeters uh, that works on the, the Lomazies and stuff like that, and the Clippies. Um, so yeah, depending on what you need, we have a size that fits your mic. I'm gonna show you how to take this out. So to unmount it, you just apply, apply a little bit of pressure on the top just to ease the capsule out, and that twists right out. You don't lose your cap inside or anything like that. Um, sometimes it can take a little bit of a knack um, or maybe some practice, but with practice, it gets a lot easier. So yeah, let's talk about the lav concealer. Um, and that's this guy here. And we have 11 different, well, we cater for 11 different microphones, but uh, I know some people have tried uh, using other microphones in and, and they do tend to work. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to mount the 4060. It's a soft rubber, which means you can bend it like this. And the best way to mount it is put your thumb at the front, two fingers at the back, bend it. That gives you the entry hole here. And then you slot the, microphone in until you feel it against your thumb. That's when it's up at the end. Let it spring back and that's the perfect mount. So um, we also have various ways of attaching this to your talent. You can use a clothing clip, um, which it comes with. I've got one here. All right, so the clothing clip fits either into the back 
two holes on either side of the cable entry or to the front, depending on how you'd like to mount it. If you're mounting it in a bra, I would suggest putting the cable clip in the front, running it up the inside of the bra and then clipping it to the outside fabric. Um, that's a very good mount. Um, the fabric guard is intended to keep fabric away from the top of the rubber. So this is the fabric guard extreme. It also, the regular size ones also come with the regular fabric guard, which is like that. And then the lab concealer is available in white or black and the corresponding color fabric guard and metalwork will come with that, either chrome or black. So that's the lab concealer and you can hear what it sounds like. Um, I'm going to attach it to my hand with some of our lab concealer tape that comes in a roll of 120. You also get six pieces when you buy the lab concealer. Um, and the tape's cut specifically to the shape of the lab concealer, again, to keep glue away from the capsule and make sure that the capsule sits in free space or as much free space as possible. Fit the tape, take the backing paper off, fit it to either skin or to fabric or to the back bumper of a car if you want to use it amount for that. It sometimes fits on a visor very well um, and that also uh, gives the mic a bit of a shock uh, mount. Uh, being that it's rubber and won't transmit as many of the vibrations. So yeah, you're hearing me talking through the 4060 on my hand now. So yeah, I'll show you how to remove it. You grab the back just under the cable and just peel it away. And then you need to free up one of the corners of the tape like that. And you peel the tape back and that comes off without leaving a residue at all and dispose of the tape. And that's the lab concealer. So if you've got any questions about that, yeah, we'd be happy to ask them. Please contact us uh, or hit us up on social media or yeah, we'll try and catch you live after this. Um, let's see if I can show you how to remove the mic. Yeah, you bend the, bend the concealer back like this again. And yeah, just twist the capsule a little bit as you bend it up and that removes it without losing any caps, which is a common question we get asked. Right, so I'd like to show you next our range of lav covers and we've got two in particular, the Invisible Lav Covers Original and the Invisible Lav Covers Fur Outdoor. And these are useful in any situation that you could use them in. Um, to protect the mic from wind, fabric, rustle, um, uh, friction and also just to give it a nice housing that you can handle easier when miking up objects and people. Um, so I'll show you how to do that with the Invisible Lav Covers original. This is one of my favorites that I use to, uh, for example, hide a mic in a cap or a hat um, as it's very unobtrusive and very transparent sounding. So I've got one here. And you can see it's a, a soft squidgy mesh fabric that has a very fine weave on one side and it's got this transparent pore weave on the other side. And that means you can, uh, the fine weave goes on the microphone side and it comes with in the box 30 mounts. That is nine of the invisible lav covers, which are reusable three to four times. And 30 of the invisible pieces of invisible lav tape. Um, so I'll show you how to mount that. And you'll notice the tape has a window in it. And that's because we don't like putting any of the tape on the grid of the microphone. That leaves a glue buildup over time and can actually change the frequency of the microphone. So pop the microphone grid in the middle of that window, like so, on the tape. Step two, I'm not gonna name the steps here. Grab your uh, invisible lav cover and put it with the fine fabric side up against the edge of the tape on one side, then bend over the other side and also depress the edge. And the reason to do do it by the edges first is because you don't you don't want to crush the mic in there too much. Try and give it as much space as possible. And then you end up with this little packet like that. 
and that protects it from, um, uh, it gives it a nice little packet and protects it from f uh, friction and a little bit of wind noise and yeah, gives you a nice way of hiding the mic in the cap. So I would normally take that and pop it just on the inside um, of the headband at the top and that puts the microphone just on the forehead which is a very nice acoustical place to put a mic on a person. Um, I'll put it on my hand and you can hear what that sounds like. Uh, me mic'd up with a 4060 on my hand. Not uh, an ideal situation all the time, but uh, works for this video. And uh, you can hear what the material does you know, frequency-wise. And we'll, it should be very transparent. And we'll take this off. Um, and then you can see the, the packet there. And then what you do is you take the mesh material from the back. And then that separates the tape out and then slowly around the edges remove the mesh material like this and that's reusable, I've already used that twice so that's the third time and it's still reusable or fourth um, and then you can pull this off the side of the mic, the tape leaves no residue and it hasn't been in contact with the grid which is really good, dispose of that if you need something a little bit more heavy duty, if you're going outdoors and it's going to be windy, if you've got heavier fabrics that you need to protect against, if you have some more space and you want to ensure that no matter what you're going to get the best results, we have um, the lav covers, the invisible lav covers, fur outdoor. And that is our piece of fur, which I have in my other lav box here. And I've used this extensively. The piece of fur allows you uh, creative freedom. Uh, this piece is cut almost to its end, but it comes in a longer piece, a much longer piece like this, and about two or two and a half times as long as this. And that allows you to cut pieces as, as you wish uh, to whatever size you need. And I use that, uh, for example, if you have a stubble uh, guy with a shaved, uh, freshly shaved neck, uh, and uh, maybe, I don't know, the stubble's come out again and he's got a collar on, you can hear a, a, like a scratching noise between the shirt and the, um, the stubble. And if you cut uh, color matched, because this comes in the same six colors as our wind bubbles, uh, white, off-white, beige, brown, gray, and black. If you cut a color matched piece of the fur for each side of the inside of the collar, um, it's a nice trick that uh, stops the uh, scratchiness uh, coming through as ambient noise. That's the piece of fur, and we've because it can get a little bit uh, ha furry, uh, cutting that on set, uh, maybe under pressure, you want to be able to go to a square that you've got pre-cut, we've pre-cut them for you. So these come with nine in three colors. So those are nine different fur squares and they have the transparent back material and the multi-pile fur on the front. And I'll show you how to fit that as well. You can hear what it sounds like very quickly because you've already seen this once. Take some of the invisible lav tape, pop the grid in the middle of the window Attach the edge of the fur cover, push down the rest of the edges. That's what it looks like in the package. That's how you would set it up if you can before, beforehand. Take off the backing paper. That's what it looks like and then fit it to your talent or whatever you'd like to fit it to. Also useful uh, using the fur on the back of, you hear me through this mic now, on the back of um, car bumpers if you want to record exhausts and give it a little bit of uh, wind protection, is you can use a microphone inside a lav concealer. And this is a really cool way of doing it. That stops the vibrations from the car coming up to the mic. And then you can put a piece of fur with the invisible lav tape over the top edge to protect the uh, protect the capsule from wind, so that would then fit over the top like that, um, and that's a really cool way of creating 
an extremely resilient uh, microphone mount for your lav mic. Um, so I'll take this off again. So again, peel it off from the back, give it a little tug around there, and the tape comes off the cover like this. The cover is reusable. And remove the tape from the mic. And there you go. And that is uh, our range of invisible lav covers. Um, that's the invisible lav covers original and the fur outdoor. And uh, I hope you like them. Give them a try at some point because they're really good um, tools to have in your toolbox. And then I'd like to show you uh, last but not least the uh, very cool little device called the Cable Saver. And that's this guy here. And the Cable Saver is really a lifesaver. It's like a shock absorber for your microphone. And you can use it in one of two ways. You can use it down near the transmitter, as I have here. And that protects against the transmitter falling and snapping and damaging the combiner on your transmitter or microphone. So yeah, that's a really good place to put it. And that's what it was designed for initially. And it saves a lot of money over time from uh, rough handling of, of transmitters and microphones. And you'll save yourself many breakages over time. Um, and the other way you can use it is up near the top of the microphone, so up near the capsule end. And um, in this case, the shock absorption effect actually acts as a vibration absorption effect and stops all cable noise from beneath that point coming to the capsule. Cable noise is a big thing. Uh, this is what it sounds like. That's rubbing it, and if you touch it. And that's generally, I mean, that's the DPA 4060. Um, different microphones, different designs have different levels of cable noise or different types of material, and therefore, yeah, it's always an issue. Um, especially if it's uh, under a shirt against um, friction, uh, sorry, thicker fabrics, uh, and, and the talent is also fidgety. That's never a good thing. Um, but basically, yeah, that's what it sounds like. And this is the effect of the cable saver, because everything below that, that's above, that's below. Above, below, and touching. So it really has a big effect on stopping the noise from reaching the, the capsule. Um, so yeah, check that out. That's called the Cable Saver. It looks like that. It comes in a pack of four, um, and that's available uh, from any Bubble Bee dealer. And yeah, we hope you like it. Thanks for watching. Um, check out our website at bubblebeeindustries.com. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube forward slash Bubble Bee Industries. And have a windy day.